Hey. Welcome back. Another week. More Haskell hacking. Adjust the volume here. I don't know if that's still good. Hopefully it's still good. Okay. What's up, chat? <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Where were we last week? With our project, we we're building an interactive fiction game engine to test the rails on like a non-trivial Haskell project where we are working with GUIs and a game engine and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Oop. This is our project here. This is our to-do file. That's all good. The code for this project lives on the GitHub's at Adventure Agent Ultra, that's me. At Adventure Engine. So you want to start, fork it, follow along, whatever you want to do. It's all good. Uh, if you're just here to Watch me do my thing. It's all good, too. Talk programming. I like, you know, backseat driving's cool. Uh, asking questions. All good as well. I uh, don't mind my voice this week. I'm getting over a bit of a head cold, so if I sound a little bit uh, at some point, I apologize. I'll be better next week, I'm sure. Okay. So let's just do a quick review of what we did. Uh, we basically have been slowly kind of refactoring a bit of the, some of the verb handlers after adding some new stuff to our monad stack for the game loop, the engine loop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we also, what else did we do? Uh, added scoring recently. So now the game can of course, which is pretty cool. So we just run it, just do a quick, uh, quick view. Nope, I'm gonna pop over the project directory. There we go. All right, we have a score widget now, which is kind of cool. We have our uh, inventory widget. You know, we got the the scenes, the rendered scenes, input. All that stuff's pretty good. So we can pick up the shovel, and I believe we get some 10 points for that. Hooray, you picked up the shovel. You get 10 points. All right, and then we can we can dig here. We get a weird coin. We get some, some more points. Uh, if we drop the shovel, we pick it back up again. We don't get any more points. It's just the first time we pick up the shovel that we get the points for that. Cool. What else do we need to do for this game? So that's good. I think we also need to have a way to define the end condition. Uh, slash windscreen. So how do you finish the game? And uh, display the score to the user, that kind of thing. Cool. So I guess for this engine, we're going to keep it kind of simple for that. Um, the rest of this stuff, I think, is just all niceties to have, like verb autocomplete. I was thinking a little bit more about that. Uh, and there is a case where we could have verbs, like multiple verbs, obviously, starting with the same letter. And... I was thinking like maybe we would just have a way to cycle them. So it would autocomplete like the first one it finds and then uh, you can just like tab through the others if there are more. Maybe not the best. Um, only The only thing I can think of that being kind of weird is um, yeah. 
Uh, the user might not know if there are more. So you'd have to train them to like tab through the alternatives. Um, so I want to think, I want to let that one bake a little bit more. I was also thinking about screen reader support, accessibility. There might be a hack around this. Uh, we might not need to like add support to Monoma right away for a screener to read the text in the Monoma widget tree. It might be possible for us to have like a background process stream the text out for a screen reader to pick up on. And I think for that, we would just need a couple more extra verbs for displaying the inventory, uh, the current score and things like that when the user wants to be able to, to hear those read out. Um, so that's, that's my, kind of my plan there, I think. I'll add a note for that. Um, Okay, and the save file versioning is nice to have. Um, unused arguments warning, that would be nice. Let's just clean up stuff. And I'm not feeling like we need to do too much with the parser right now. Same with object interaction. Until, I'm gonna save object interaction until like I'm actually like designing the game game. Um, so there might be some puzzles I want to do there that require it. But right now, I don't have the imagination for it, and I don't want to make things up. So yeah, okay. Uh, and then, like, yeah, some little refactoring, nice-to-have tasks. I think this is going to be the next big one. I'm getting rid of hard-coded map data and objects. And... Yeah. End condition windscreen. Oh, let's work on that one. So for our mini our mini engine, if we go over to that, right, our mini world, I should say. It's kind of hard coded into the adventure engine right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh let's see, shovel. Yeah. So we're kind of defining all the objects in Haskell. The idea is that we'll be able to define all of these in like a file format at some point in time, probably some form of JSON. <clears throat> we can then, the game engine can then just load the database of these objects that are defined by the author and start running the game. Uh, for now, hard coded. So let's think about how we're going to do the end screen. That's like a, a goal, I guess. Right, like some way of finishing the system. And for most of these kinds of games, we're talking about like done it or um, uh, Zork and and other kind of games where you're you're picking up items, you're moving them around, you're unlocking things, you're progressing through the world that way. And eventually you get to the end, right? And then you get a, a final score and a nice little end game screen, right? So how do we want to trigger the end game? Most of the time it is reaching some final destination with potentially maybe some objects, game objects in your inventory. Some games it might be like interacting with a final object in some way. Um, so there's, there's like different ways it could be done, I guess. Um, so how could we code this so that we leave ourselves a 
extension point in the code so that if we want to add more different kinds of wind conditions, we can just expand like a data structure or something like that. Well, maybe let's start with a type, I guess. Um, game engine, da, da, da. This is all our data. Go to reward. Let's go to open the rewards file. Rewards. Okay. This is all like the reward handling code. The different game events that can happen. Uh, the event rewards, things like that. And how we calculate the score is by matching over the event log with the event reward type of event reward types that the, the author can define. Every time uh, one of those matches, score goes up. A We could do a similar thing for the goal, actually. Hmm. Maybe, if, like, maybe the end goal could be like one special kind of reward. Because this matches a whole lot of different things, right? Different events to some amount for the score. And those events are pretty rich. The item picked up, item dropped, item examined, player moved, player looked in container, player looked at exit. We could trigger the end game off of one of those events. We could say, okay, if this this event happens, the player looked in this particular container, that should trigger the end game. That should trigger the end screen. And we want to be able to, the, the author to define what the end screen is as well. So could we maybe extend event reward with an extra field that says, uh, event reward game and bool when we do this we have we could have zero or more event rewards in the game database when the user when the author writes their game and if they had several of these event rewards with true, for example, it would be kind of difficult to say which one should trigger the end game. These are usually matched with, uh, let's see, for the scoring at least in order with the event log, which happens linearly. So what would it mean if we had more than one? All right, if we had it so that it was like the first one that triggers, triggers the game end, right? There could be multiple ways to end the game basically there would be like say three ways to end the game and we just pick the first one that succeeds and right, so it matches the event the reward event it's a game end event so add the score and end the game right away and that would that could be kind of interesting that would mean that you could end the game in a room by dropping an item somewhere. Ooh, actually, that's interesting. Uh, we probably want more information about the item dropped, where it was dropped, because it can be moved. 
by the player. Add that to the to-do list as well. Uh, update item dropped to take room ID as well. Maybe item picked up as well. Yeah, item picked up as well. Okay. Right. So I like the idea of having multiple possible endings and leaving that kind of open. So as a game design constraint, it just means that when you're defining these rewards, um, yeah, I don't know if it'll matter if, it, if it's like the first one that matches is the one that ends the game. But if you're going to have multiple different ways to trigger the end game like this by having several event rewards with true, um, we probably want to want match those with some specific text for that particular event trigger. Mm hmm. What's a, another way? I don't know if I want to like uh, pollute this with like a more richer type here. Like we could be maybe it's a game end thing, and then if it is, then we have some like game end text. Right. If we had text, then that would mean that if there is a game end, it's not nothing, then this is a game end event, and if it matches, then display this text as on the game end screen. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's try that out. I didn't mean that. Okay, cool. I gotta bring text into scope. Uh, import. Okay, I gotta fix this here before to compile. One more. Okay. Right, so our events. Uh, let's make a function for this. Um, game end. Game end will take the event log, a list of event reward. And Returns the maybe text. Yeah. So the game engine can then call this function when it's doing the update step with the current, like in the current state when it's doing the update loop. At the end, detect game end. 
If it's nothing, it's not game over yet. So keep going. If it is, then go to the the thing and end the end the end the game. Or change the the state, the game state. So we'll probably have to have like some kind of game state toggle for the end game kind of thing in the game engine, so that when we process the input loop again, we only handle like maybe the special commands at the game end or something like that. Like save, quit, that that sort of thing. Uh, but we we stop processing verbs. I don't know something like that probably. So. What would this even look like? Events, event rewards. Okay. So we basically want to find the f When we check the game end in the event list, do we need to check the whole list or just the last one if there is one? I think we only need to check the last one. Assuming that we always get past a monotonically increasing list of events. <laughs> I think, think that'll be fine. So we can't use last safely without checking first. The list of events is not empty. So if the, no the events is null, that means we should return nothing. Otherwise... Let's try taking the tail. Do let event equals tail of events in um, check game end event against event reward or no find yeah we could just do find with function to game end and the event rewards that'll find the leftmost value or the first value that passes a thing and i think it returns maybe Of course, is a silly type for it. Oh, sorry, not fine. Check game end. What am I doing? And we'll just copy this type here. All right, we're not quite done with this yet. We need to add a function on here to go from the event reward to the text. So if we find something, uh, so we can F map over this. And this function should be event reward to text. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, so GHC here is telling me that uh, we need a function uh, for event word to text because find returns a maybe. And we're going to return a maybe because 
if we just look in that record event reward for the text we're looking for, we actually have a maybe text. The check game end function is going to use that maybe as like its boolean checkness. So maybe maybe this isn't quite what I want. Um, am I thinking of reverse bind? Oh, what is it? There we go. We'll use bind instead of fmap. And this will just let us do um, event reward game end. Cool. So check, we haven't used event yet, so this isn't quite correct. Uh, it should be like this. We're checking the event against the event reward. Hmm. Uh, not tail, maybe last. That's the one I was thinking of. Okay. So then we just have to implement check game end. So we match the event against the event reward. Let's pull apart the event to get out the um, event type, kind. Uh, reward kind. Texts, uh, game and text. No, it's not event, is it? It's one of these, yeah. Okay, so that means mm, we should flip the arguments around. Yeah, I feel like we should flip the arguments around on this one. Hey, Sin Devil Love Pie. Sweet. Is it open source? Do you want to share? I'd love to take a look. Sin Dev, I love Pie. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Fine, sin. Okay, so I'm going to flip the arguments around on this. I'm going to just do this little hack there. I didn't. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so dumb with this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not open source because source code is on my old PC. I need to get it off. Okay, okay. Well, if you ever want to show it, let me know. I would love to check it out. Uh, you can... We have a Discord channel for this uh, stream on the... You can find on the Discord server through that link there. Um, if you want to do that sometime, whenever you get that going. So, let's see... Yeah, so we take the event in the second argument now instead, which means now we can lambda case here on the different constructors of event. So for like item picked up, item dropped, so on and so forth. I'm just gonna split this in two. So we're gonna have to match all of them. Item picked up, blah, 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 does something. Item dropped. I'm just gonna undefine all of them and kind of work on them one at a time, I guess. Mm. 
Ex examined, okay. yes. So uh, welcome. Is it sign dev? You love P? Are you a, a Haskell programmer by any chance or Haskell curious? <laughs> oh, cool, cool. So you just, you're here for the, the text adventure, the in interactive fiction stuff. That's awesome. I'm tempted. I've been tempted to like increase the scope of this project a little bit and maybe add like a conversation system and do more visual novel -y type stuff as well. But this is more of like a puzzle game engine. So more like getting through rooms and collecting items and, and solving little logic puzzles. Uh, but we do have a graphical interface. So it is going to have the ability to um, display graphics eventually and be themable and things like that as well. So this is what our game looks like so far. If you haven't seen it yet, um, it's kind of got like a ver uh, parser kind of interface. Uh, you can pick up the shovel. Or so I don't know how to do pick pick up the shovel. You have your inventory here, and you have a score. It renders the scene, that kind of stuff. Cool. Right on. Balance is key. Indeed. Sometimes sometimes I can be a bit of an extremist, so I have to like balance that with other things in my life outside of programming, maybe. <laughs> um, but it's true, like I, I use all kinds of different languages. I use Haskell in my day job and for fun for the most part. But I still like hack stuff in C when it's appropriate, when I need to, for various projects and whatever. It's all good. I just like programming. So player looked in container is another event we track in the game log. And so on and so forth. So I'm just going to pop a lot of these in here. Player, uh, oh, player looked at exit, uh, Doug. And container unlocked. And container unlock failed. Probably some events we're not tracking here that we probably should. Now that I'm looking at this list again, I'm thinking uh, we have locks on doors. That should be a thing. So I'm going to add that to the to-do li to -do list as well. Door unlocked event. And move back on here. Okay. Yes, OK. That's all good. Okay, so let's find for now. So we've got all the undefined ones here. Uh, link your engine running the prologue of a visual novel. Super. Yeah, please. If it's NSFW, then uh, I'll play. It. I'll probably play it off stream. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I'd love to check it out. Just give me some content warnings. So we have to have Lambda case derived up here because we're using that extension. Nice. That's a good that's a good thing to do too for streamers. Thank you very kindly. Nice. Okay, we'll just check it out.
Okay. So most of these cases when we're checking for game end, we only care if the uh, event we're looking at, the event we're scrutinizing matches the event reward um, field, right? In fact, the whole event actually, might not, all this pattern matching might've been for naught. Oh, that's okay. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's right. I did, in the event reward, take the whole event. So that's, this was actually probably not super necessary to do all this pattern matching. Oops. A little distracted. Stream brain, what can you do? Um, okay, so literally we only need to do um, so the reward event. Cool. Uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to take a little peek. Let's just load in. Okay, let's try it out. To do. Welcome. Fate stay night. Awesome. So we have skip fast forward, save menu, load menu, make quick slots, type moon. Nice. It was a thrust like lightning. A spearhead thrust to pierce my heart. Trying to dodge it would be useless. Being lightning, it's invisible to the human eye. I like this. But. The lightning that tries to pierce me is repelled by the moonlight that tries to save me. Yes. A beautiful sound. The armor she is wearing is not beautiful at all, and as I refined as the cold night, the sound wasn't beautiful at all. It was actually the sound of steel. It's just that the night is beautiful enough to turn into a charming sound like a bell. Are you my master? She asks in a voice that lights up the darkness. I have come forth in response to your summons. Cool. Nice art. Is this your work as well, or is this commissioned? Looks good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, it's tight moons. Okay, cool. That was the artist. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing. This is neat. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Right on. Well, thank you for sharing. That's that's neat. Yeah, we're going to be able to do something similar with this engine as well. 
similar-ish. Um, but as you, as you saw, it was more of like a slightly, slightly parser-ish game. And so did you do that in vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript or how'd you build the engine out? Cool. So I didn't, I didn't uh, play with it. I'll play with it a little bit more um, at some point. Oh, cool. All scripting language, nice. Yeah, my, my parser in this game engine is pretty, pretty silly. <laughs> nice. Yeah, if I take a stab at doing like a two point, version 2.0 engine, I might do something a little bit more like Inform 7 or something like that. Uh, where you do more like a bytecode style VM engine. But for now, this will be good enough. Little hobby project, just to learn some programming. You know. Okay, so when we're checking the event reward, we just have to check that the event we get is equal. So I don't actually need to flip the arguments really either. So I can get rid of this little, little hack here, flip these back around. Flip the bindings back around. Okay, and then basically just have a guard. So if the event is equal to the reward event, then we have uh, true. In fact, that's all we need to return. We don't even need the mgain text. Ignore that as well. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, cool. Neat. I, mean, I haven't really defined the, the file format yet for the database and, and all the, the stuff. This game engine will eventually allow people to do and build with, but uh, I'm sure it's simple enough that if anybody wanted to do something in a different language, they probably could read the files generated by this and and write their own uh, engine for it as well. That's well, cool. Must have been a pretty fun project. Okay, so we have the game end check. That works. Play with it a little bit. So let's have a world of events where, well, let's just have empty events. Uh, rewards. Well, what should it be in the empty case? Nothing, right? About a week, right on. Nice. I love having nice little little side projects like this to work on. It's uh, it's relaxing. You know, I work on on fintech stuff at day job, and it's it is what it is. It's challenging sometimes, boring some other times, depending what's what you're working on. But, um, yeah, visual novels, interactive fiction, all good stuff. Okay, so if we have the game end check with two empty lists, we get nothing, which means the game would never end. It wouldn't be possible to complete it. 
we can correct this and make push the constraint up to the callers by transforming event reward from a list, a plain list, which can have zero or more elements to a data structure that requires at least one element, a non-empty list. And this would basically make a contract with the authors to say, well, you have to have at least one event reward in your list of event rewards. Um, there's still the possibility though, even with that type, that we could not, we could still have an incorrectly defined database with re rewards that have no goal. Saber. Let's check that out too. Cool. Substation alpha, subtitles renderer. Neat. Oh, that's pretty awesome. It's like some, being able to render. Oh, subtitles, neat. So you should be able to, does it let you kind of set when the subtitles appear in the video? Oh, I guess the subtitle data would have that, I suppose. Okay. Neat. So you could like let user subs and stuff with this library. Right, a subtitle file. Okay, cool. That could be interesting. Is that used in, uh, in some uh, other projects? Fan sub projects or something like that? Or video editing or something? Okay, game end, so, yeah. That's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> that could be, yeah, I imagine it would be a little fairly Fairly challenging. There's lots you could do there. Okay, so I'm I'm not too sure that game end here. Like non empty list makes it so at least we have an event to match against. We could still get a case where the author defines a set of event rewards that don't have and a, a game end field, uh, which it might be difficult and pretty complicated to come up with that requirement at the type level. We could make it maybe at the parsing level where we detect that before loading a game file and make that an error if you don't have at least one re event reward with a game end condition in it. Um, or we could define the game end reward separately from the event normal event rewards, which that way we could just say that, you know, the game state has this list, non empty list of reward game ends, and then it's explicit. I'm thinking that's probably the better design instead of mixing them up with event rewards. So to have like uh, 
game end reward. Similar structure. Right, where it's got an event to match against. A game ending event. And then it has game and uh, text. And then it just be and then it could just be a text. That's a little cleaner. Derive some bait stock instances for that. I think that look works a little bit better. We can still enable the ability to have multiple different ways to complete the game, but then we can have uh, the requirement that there's at least one uh, game end reward that you pass into the game end function to determine is the game over or not. We have to import that. Um, I'll import the type here. And then we don't need to check for null events anymore. Because non empty guarantees, there's always one. So we can just pattern match it out. Yeah, I hope somebody will use it too. There's nothing like having users, for sure. And yeah, I could see that project, like even I was saying, like for fan subs or um, something like that, where the 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 file might be generated on the server side and could be served up to the front end to render with the video. And that could be pretty useful. Um, especially for like an open source video hosting application like PeerTube or something like that. You know, you could engage the community to, to do the translations. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, if I ever do streams like this and I'm, and somebody's like, hey, I can translate that to, to whatever, to to Arabic, to Chinese, or whatever. That'd be pretty neat. Also for our accessibility allies and friends who want to, who might be, you know, want transcripts and things like that. Um, captioning is pretty nice. It's a nice thing to have. Well, cool project. Thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, so now let's see. So we still get the last event. But now we don't have to search the event rewards. What we can do instead is Let's see. We can check against the current game end event. All right. And if it's true, then we then it's true, and then it matches. Then we return the text. All right. Um, so and that would look like maybe if let's just write it out if with an if expression. So if the event is equal to uh, the uh, blah, blah. that's going to name clash with that. So I should call it something else. End event, maybe. 
then if the event equals game and event of the end event, then we simply uh, return just game and text of end event. Um, I have a preference for doing this with the dot this way and just being consistent there. Else, now we have the rest and we can find in that one as we had before, actually. Check uh, game end with the event and uh, that'll be not event reward, but game end reward. Uh, on rest. Now we bind that to uh, the what? I, forgot, I don't know what should go in there actually. GC, tell me. Then I have type errors. Game and reward. And there we go. Hey, Beavish. Welcome back. It has been a while. I'm glad to see you again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been well. I am enjoying the weather in my area right now. It's been pretty nice. Spring is springing. I got a family of cardinals moving into the yard. So it's nice to see them every morning. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. Uh, game and text. Yeah, so we're just working on the end game condition checking for the game engine. So we have come a long way since you've been around. We have scoring now and uh, things like that. So now we're just adding the game end checking so the author can come up with their own end game screens and match them against the events, the game events and the game event log um, to detect when to show those screens. So yeah, that I think that that'll that'll work. Let's play around with that. So again, similarly, if we have events uh, rewards now, we have to import data dot list dot non empty. So we let rewards equal to uh, game and reward. Uh, let's say item dropped and ID four and the rest. So now if we run game end with the an empty event log and this one reward, Oh, I didn't quite uh, define rewards properly. Ooh, empty list. That's not good. What do I still have last? Ah, yes, there. We do. We do still need to check that event isn't 
empty before we call last on that. Uh, so I should probably bring that back in. Oops, my bad. Uh, I wasn't paying attention when I took that out. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's that results in nothing. It's not over here. There's no events to to end the game. So of course that should be nothing. Um, if we make this instead, item dropped, entity ID three, this should still be nothing. But if it is, um, item dropped, entity ID four, this should be just foo, and it is. All right, but if we have four here and three here, it's nothing because we're taking the last element. So the assumption with game end here is that we're going to call this function every time we add an event to the event log. So we might take the whole event log or we could just take a single event. If we're only taking the last element, then uh, that whole check is probably seems a little unnecessary. Let's take it out. And we don't need this anymore. We can just rename it event. And we don't need in. Okay, a little name clash. Fix that. No problem. Just shorten it up. And okay, so that is should be basically equivalent to instead of this, we just have rewards like this. And we could just get rid of the list. Yeah, but you, you get what I mean there. So I think I think that should be fine. I just parentheses issue there. Yeah. Okay. Um. So cleaning up this code now, we can get rid of this if statement. We can just match, we can just match guard on it. In that case, equals. Uh, otherwise, Just shorten that up a little bit. Okay, and uh, that looks pretty okay. I'm not. I'm. I'm okay with that. Now, where we where we need to do so. There's a bit of a contract here with game end. I think, which is what I'm thinking about right now. So when we go to uh, handle a verb in the game engine, handle look, handle pickup, so on and so forth, we have this emit event action, right? And emits event into the game state that says we've done this thing. The user has done this. It is, they've picked up the item. And game end now takes a single event 
the list of game end rewards and returns of maybe text and decides. Okay, are we done now? Where's the appropriate place um, to handle that and make sure that we use it properly? The contract basically is that the event shouldn't be just any trivial event in the set of events, which is what the type says. It should be the last event that we handled. All right, so let's look at the update uh, loop here. Let's handle verb. Uh, it might actually be in the GUI loop. Yeah. Update game. That's an engine, I believe. There we go. Okay. So here's the top level thing with the GUI loop is the GUI uh, front end thread is using to update the game state when it gets, when the user presses enter and fires off an event, the front end picks up that event and calls this function with the current state of the, the game. And to get a new state of the game. So this is probably where we want to do game end. So this is where we actually want to get the last event of the event log. Check if the game end is nothing or just something just some text and i guess flip to some state the game over state so that will look like something like this i think where we have rendered the input so after we've rendered the scene Yeah, after we've rendered the final scene, that's what we'll do. We'll check for the game end event here. Okay. So now we can only get the last element out of the, the game log if it's not empty. So we have to be careful about that. Um, so if null, uh, or maybe we need to pull it out. G, I'm going to use the lens. Uh, I think we call it the event log. Data game. Beat. Yeah. Uh, event log. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Hmm. No, no, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> I don't think this is where I want to put this. No, I think I want to put it in update and handle prime. This is where we could flip. We handle the verb, we do that. And then we could flip the state. 
And then all the rendering, that render loop has to do is just check that state flag to see if I should render the scenes or if I should render the end game screen. And we could have like a different nice layout for those, which would be kind of cool. So yeah, I only want the GUI to like read the state. I don't want, I want it to avoid doing as much updating as possible, even though we're doing a little bit of updating there. Um, so let's do it here. Oh, handle verb. So then we have to get the last thing. Um, I don't think I have a safe last. So if I have, let's say, And that's going to be events. Okay. So I have the events there. Then I want to case match on the last event, if there is one. If events is null, then nothing, don't worry about it. Otherwise, if it's not, we should case match on our game end function. The last of events with something which we don't have yet of nothing the game isn't over yet so don't worry about it otherwise it is something has to happen there Type error is funny. Uh, that shouldn't be there. Oh, I forgot to remove it. <laughs> okay. Start the process. Come on. Okay. For some reason the uh, background process in my editor is going a little funky, so we'll just start our build process here. So we have the file watcher on the compile, on the compiler, or the stack tool anyway. Uh, no, I gotta go into the projects. Maybe it'll tell me that this type error is actually a type error. Yeah, no, it isn't. But these are... And let's fix the next one. And that might be why it's not catching up. Yeah, that one there.
Ja. Uh, what have I done here? Let's see. The hole, that's expected. That hole's expected. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We need to add to the game state the uh, game end rewards. that. Straighten those up, that barrel. And of course, since we added a new field, we're going to get a bunch of pattern match errors in this file. Because I use a lot of destructuring. I'm thinking once I add the lenses to this, which I should be able to use actually, I think I have, oh no, they're not available in this file because of the way I do this, where I do the splices. We kind of did that with, uh, covered that a little while ago with template Haskell. Um, so I still have to figure out a solution for that. But once I do have it, I should be able to get rid of these pattern matches and just use the lenses. And then it'll make extending the game state record a little bit easier and less annoying. And a hole here, and a hole here. There, 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 and there. I guess last of them. Okay. Hole, hole, that's good. Yes, and then... Uh, this cat. Okay. Game state itself. Uh, I think I put the type. I might have put the type as a list. But really, it should be not empty. And import that. I'll import the constructors with it. It's usually pretty useful. Okay, I'll jump back over there. Uh, 
Oh, and we have to ask oh, the serialization, right? This is where the parser is going to get a little, a little tricky. JSON lists could, could be empty. Nothing wrong with that. Um, However, it would be an error for us here. Uh, so don't think ASON, I'm not sure if ASON has any helpers for this. Um, Yeah. I don't know why it was giving me this search page. It's weird. Okay, it doesn't. So we're going to have to like do that a little bit manually, which is kind of why sometimes doing your it's JSON parsing manually uh, like this instead of deriving it directly on the record can be kind of useful is that sometimes the serialized version of your your data is not the same as its in-memory representation um, whereas we're kind of using this applicative parsing style here so we're kind of just like assuming it'll be all good uh, when really we have to take, uh, parse the uh, event, the uh, game end uh, rewards. Uh, so we can do that normally uh, with We'll call the key game end rewards as well. And this needs to be changed to a do block. Uh, that doesn't need pure yet, no. Uh, although it will. If null game and rewards, then if, I think it's fail. And we'll just say like, something like that, something generic, might be not the best at mirror message. Uh, we'll have to pull out all of these parsers, I think. I don't think we can use this like this anymore. Maybe we can. I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe it's fine. No. What's not fine? Oh, yeah, we got to convert it to non-empty as well. Um, so if it's not empty, then we have, we're going to need the non-empty constructor uh, from list, which is not usually safe unless you know it's not empty, which we know that by now here. At least the programmer knows that, if GHC doesn't. Uh, 
which we can do like this and combine our pure function into our applicative one this way, I believe. We're gonna need to import that. data.list.notempty as an E. Oh, maybe I don't need peer there. I just do like that. Too few arguments, that's interesting. Okay, it was just a parentheses issue, nice. <laughs> uh, you know, precedence. Okay, uh, what's our next type error here? We can't have, we can't have Ooh. Our default game state uh, has to have a game end condition of some kind. That's okay. This one's like just for testing purposes or whatever. Uh, do we have a singleton function for this one. It doesn't have singleton. Um, what is it? Data dot non empty. There it is. And if we want to just construct one with a single element, what's that function in it? No. Oh, it is in there, but since I'm probably, I probably have an older base then. I guess we can use just from lists. Uh, we have game end where mm, we'll just put Doug into the ID zero. With some text. Game and reward, I believe. There we go. Okay, so that should be Yes, that should be that. Right, we need a JSON instance for game and reward. Uh, we could just 
do that standalone drive that one automatically. Perfect. Okay, so now we have something to pass into game end. We pull that into scope. And boom. Okay, so in this case now, uh, let's let's have some kind of action. Uh, set game over with the game over text. So we need to define set game over with that type, but uh, that's pretty straightforward. So let's go to data game state. We'll add a flag. Game end. Uh, I should probably call it set game end. Just a boolean flag, I think it'll be good enough. And then game state, game and text. Uh, could just be Maybe text, or just text. I'm gonna have to go through that whole thing again. I'm gonna leave that off for now, and we'll just ignore the argument. Uh, just so we could test it out, because I don't wanna bother with that at the moment. Ooh, also. Probably want that as well. Oh, I'm going to have to update the parsers. Ah, uh, we're going to bother with it. We're going to have to bother with it. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Uh, it's getting. It's getting a bit big.
What did I add too many? We only need to, oh, okay, I just need to add one. Too many. Too many. Too many on that one. Probably too many on that one. No, not enough. Perfect. All right, that should almost do it. One more. Try not to touch that game state anymore <laughs> for the rest of the night. Let's see if we can get away with that. Okay, so back to where we were. Okay, so we don't have a constructor for set game over yet, but we're going to, or an action for that. Uh, missed one more spot there. We're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna add it up here, I guess. And do that's the type it needs. We'll call it set game end. Okay. Um, it's going to need some constraints here, though, on M. Need monad m, monad state, game state on m. Okay, and then what this is going to allow us to do is just to pull out the game state and do what we need to do with the game and text. Okay. So we're going to set G and um, the do, do, do. Oh yeah, we're going to ignore the text for now. Just because I don't want to bother with it. We're just going to flip the boolean on it. Uh, game end set to true. Oh, right, I can't do that because of the stupid splits. I probably can't do that because of the splices.
if I put it at the end of the file, after this place, I'm pretty sure it'll work. If it wasn't for the ambiguity. Let's call it... Is game end. Oh, it's got to be pure. Oh, right. Uh, I'm not taking G as a parameter. I'm going to get it out of the monad uh, get and we're going to put this new state in there and we can just or we don't even need the pure line there Uh, there, there we go. Type errors gone. Oh yeah. Set game end. Okay, and the sick game is not going to be in scoop. So I'm not going to be able to use fancy uh, lenses here for that. I'm just going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Until I figure that out. No problem, no problem. We're just going to get G. And then we'll just G where game state is game and equals true. And that one uh, shadows. Okay, cool. That all type checks and compiles. Hooray! Um, okay, we're running a little low on time for the stream. I just want to test that this is actually going to, like, kind of work. So the quickest way to do that... Let's go over to the rendering. And... We go to build the UI and render render this stuff. Uh, we could we could test the state here. So 
say if uh, game state is game end of the model and then something else the regular widget tree uh, let's make a note out of different a different widget tree we'll do uh, an h stack with a label you won no style okay compiles let's check it out So we pick up the shovel. I think our wind condition is dig in this room. Okay. Not quite what we want, but almost. <laughs> so it's flipping the state, but it's not uh, getting to the render part until uh, we ask the game asks for a redraw. Um, so we only call this build UI. At the initial start app. Why isn't it actually, why isn't it going right away? I was curious. Uh, so let's go to update game. Right. So to handle prime, we check for the null events. It's we check for the game end, and if it's and we look at the last event. Ah, okay. And if it matches, then we set the game end to that. So when we do set that as the final action, that's not an error state. We go to the risk branch here. We render the scene, the world, and the input buffer back to this. Hmm. Hmm. Why is it doing it this way? That's interesting. Okay. Pick up the shovel and we dig. This is the wind condition. But it doesn't actually update the UI until we process the next command after. Okay, something, some, some kind of bugs there. But we are out of time today, folks. Oh, we are so out of time. Let's see if we can't. I don't know if we can we can fix this quickly. Yeah.
So this handle event is what is doing um, the polling in the main UI loop. Hmm. I wonder if the reason why it's not updating until we process the next command after, like it's getting the end state. But I guess it maybe maybe it's modeling here and it's painting. When, before or after? Something, one of those two things. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's try debugging this with debug trace. Good old classic debug.trace. Okay. That's where update game gets called. Yeah. Okay. Engine. No. Oh, uh, go back to GUI. Actually, port a debug in the wrong place. Let's put it over here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna figure this out. Debug trace. Let's go. Okay. And uh, handle here we'll trace here uh, we'll show do we have Jesus G game stadiums we can bring the game state in the scope okay we'll trace it here My game, building, 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 building. Here we go. Okay. So when we have picked up the shovel, when we press enter, we should see the game state with the item picked up event in the events log. And it should still, the game end state should still be false. And it's not rendering out to the terminal here. Super useful. Okay. So yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense actually. It's only getting to that branch when we get to that thing. So our game state, when we do get to this branch, is we have item picked up, Doug. And then it's look oh okay. I think what's hap what might be happening. Is In this case in handle, we are checking if events is null. 
After handle verb, it shouldn't be. Technically, I don't think there's any branch where that could go there, but be that as it may. Huh, I wonder why... Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to pull G out there. I'm going to pull G in here. I'm going to get it again. So I'm going to get the game state after handling verb. Uh, we can... Uh, trace that here as well. Before game end. Show G. Um, yeah. Wait for that to recompile and run it and see what happens here. Okay, cool. So when I pick up the shovel, we should see it this time. Yeah. So before we do the no, the the game of check, we have item picked up. That's the only event. Right. So that's what I'm saying is like after you, the end user presses enter that first time, that first command. We handle, we do handle for the first time. We should probably never get to this branch. Like events should ne technically never be null. Okay, so we get the else branch. We didn't hit it this time. Okay. Well, we do dug or dig, sorry. So before the game end check, Uh, game and text is set to woohoo and the events yeah it's item picked up and dug all right so it's technically set I think the reason why this was quite long is that we're actually printing it twice. We have a four game chick. And then I think we have printed it again and we got to that branch. I think we're playing, playing, putting it twice. Anyway, so we go, maybe, maybe it's not. So we go to look. Now we get to the game end state. Oh, we get to that branch now. Uh, 
let's do again here g2 get the state and we'll show g2 and we'll go after game and check Okay, and pick up shovel, dig, look. No, rebuild, come on. It wasn't, it didn't rebuild fully. I'm gonna try again here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Pick up that shovel. Dig. Win the game. Okay, so after the game end check. The game state is such. Where... The game love and log looks like this. It has item picked up. Doug. That's it. As the game end text, game and state is false. That's not right. So maybe our state update isn't working. And maybe that's the bug. Oh, it would be. It would be. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we're getting G2 before we call a set game end. Um, yeah, so that, that would be a thing. So let's move that down there. Yeah, that's what we want. Now it's finished compiling. Now we're on it. Okay, there we go. Boop. Pick up the shovel. Dig away. Trigger the bug. Okay, so now the game state end is true. Game end text is woohoo. Okay. So now it's actually flipping over. Um, but it's still it's still rendering. The whole thing. So it's like the... It's almost like the update loop is... If we pick up the shovel here... It's rendered those scenes, added the scenes to the stack, update, added the shovel to the inventory, changed the score, everything's good. Here, the event is in the event log that the item was picked up. All right. If I drop the shovel, everything gets updated fine. Still not the game end. Pick up the shovel, but we dig. All right, we're still the game end is false. 
Okay. And that is because for game end check. We haven't checked that branch yet. Oh, we haven't hit that branch yet, interestingly. If I do look, now it will. Ah, okay, it's... Yes, okay, I see what's going on. <laughs> we're looking at the, when we decide to do null events and doing the game end, we're looking at the state before, when we, before we handle the verb. Handling verb changes the state, so technically we shouldn't be pulling the events out here. That's, that's my problem. That's my bug. So we should literally just be able to call the game end. We should probably have a game end wrapped in some kind of function that could check in the state. Otherwise we can pull out the parts of the state after handling the verb and pass them into game end. And then the nice thing about this will be that game end can actually, this game end check action can do this, this stuff as well. Like all of this setting the, changing the state stuff. Um, and that would look like, maybe like check game end, monad m, monad state, game state, m, and it just returns accept t of game error, m of unit. Now, now's where we can pull out that stuff. Uh, let's get, and I'm going to avoid pattern matching it out just because, like, it's starting to become a bit of a headache having to update a bunch of spots, and I don't want to add another one. So I'm going to pattern match it out. Uh, we're going to... Uh, case... Game end... Of... The last after getting the game state uh, event log of G and game state uh, game and rewards of G of nothing, it's pure unit, that's fine. We're actually going to ignore the game over text for now. And we can just call that. Actually that, we can't, can't run it. We'll, we'll put it in there. We need the game over text.
That should do it. So restart the game. Once this compiles, I think that'll fix the bug. So pick up the shovel. We dig and we win. Okay. Cool. And that's better. Is there anything we can clean up here? That looks okay. Let's just do a quick little review. Uh, we should probably get rid of the debug trace stuff. Yes. Kill that hunk. Yeah, a bunch of updates because we changed the game state. Uh, so we have set end game, set the game to end. Uh, the game state now has the game end rewards, and we added all that stuff. Um, the boolean flag to check for the game end state. We updated the parsers and serializers for the game state to add all that data. I think, did we get it all? Yeah, game end, game end rewards are also added. Game end rewards and game end state. Okay. Um, it should probably also have the game end. We didn't add the game end text, did we? Not yet to the game state, I don't think. Not yet. No, we will though. So that'll be in the next step. We can do that next later. So that looks good. And checking for game end. That looks good too. All clean, all clean. And then the GUI, the UI has some stuff there, some basic stuff there. Okay. Cool. Let's check it in. Game and add game and check. When the user, uh, when the last event in the event log matches one of the end game conditions. Game and reward. Uh, set the game to the end game state. Okay, that's what we got for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow along with the code, you can always check it out. Uh, Agent Ultra slash Adventure Engine. And hack stuff, submit patches, pull requests, all good. And fun. I do these streams. If this is your first time tuning in, I do these streams about once a week on Tuesday nights. Uh, you can follow along with the Adventure Engine projects if you're here for cool interactive fiction stuff. Uh, we're getting uh, closer and closer to being able to start developing like a proper game with this now and uh yeah i think the next step we're probably gonna once we get clean up the end game stuff uh we should get what are we on our to list a couple of a couple of fixes for some of the event logs and the events in our to-do list but uh once we get those done and little tiny things we should probably get the graphics going and kind of make a minimal minimal game out of this and see how far it goes. So we're, we're getting there. Um, other thing I want to think start thinking about in the next few weeks is going to be like, what are what's our next project going to be? I have a couple of ideas, uh, but if you have some, please feel free to join the Discord. 
or you can follow me on the uh, Fediverse at uh, agentultra at types.pl. And that's me. I'm kind of moving off of Twitter, but I'm also on Twitter for now at Agent Ultra. Um, but you can follow me here as well. And yeah, you know, send me a message. Tell me what you think. Project ideas, whatever. Um, some things I'm thinking about maybe doing are um, more stuff with Postgres uh, Replicant, which is the streaming replication library we did for Haskell here on the stream. And building more of a, an application framework around that. Uh, some other things I was thinking about doing is maybe we could do a compiler for a simple language, uh, all the way down to like machine code, like a full stack front end compiler, code gen, the whole nine yards. Um, cause com Haskell and compilers are like happy mode. Um, that could be a fun project. Another one would be SQLite. I recently read has a streaming interface, a way to like a, a wall, uh, right ahead of log system and there are some bindings for haskell we could probably extend those those libraries to add features to be able to stre do streaming replication from sqlite as well which could do some really neat things with haskell um which would be pretty awesome that could be that could be a fun project as well um and of course like game dev could be another thing we do a different kind of game instead of a interactive fiction maybe something more arcadey um, whatever the case may be, I don't know. Throw my ide throw ideas my way. Um, that's all I got for now. So may all your monads be free. May your types always check. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>